After the Varsity Blues college admission scandal that in 2019 rocked the world of higher education and included high profile names like Full House actress Lori Laughlin serving two months in prison, her husband serving five months, actress Felicity Huffman serving 11 days for paying to have their kids accepted into fancy colleges. Well, the final case in the operation is in the books, and for the first time, a parent was found not guilty. The government has been incredibly successful in taking down most of these parents and coaches, and I've long believed that in some of these cases, the prosecutors have focused too much on the parents and not enough on the corruption that exists at many of these schools. The fundraising that comes with expectations. In some cases, it's not much different from what certain parents were doing. Now, a famous lawyer who will join us in a moment was able to get his client acquitted by pointing the finger of blame directly at the university. Prior to last week, the government had basically had a perfect record in prosecuting Varsity Blues defendants. The first 56 cases, 51 defendants pled guilty. 41 of those have been sentenced with an average of 93 days behind bars. One defendant was pardoned by former President Trump, and a coach got a deferred prosecution agreement. Three defendants went to trial. All three were convicted. Two of them so far have been sentenced, one to just over 12 months, the other to 15 months. So basically, before last week, the government was undefeated. Until Thursday, when a Boston jury found businessman Amin Corey not guilty on all counts, stemming from accusations that he bribed then Georgetown University tennis coach Gordon Ernst with $180,000 in cash in exchange for his daughter's recruitment to the team and admission to the university. The defense argued that Corey's daughter was properly admitted to the school, which routinely treated the kids of parents with deep pockets favorably in admissions. Ernst didn't testify because he asserted his right against self-incrimination. He's pled guilty to accepting more than three million in bribes to help students get into the school is scheduled to be sentenced next month. So yes, Corey's case was a bit different from dozens of others because, you know, for example, the, uh, the guy was accused um, of working with all of these parents. Rick Singer, the consultant, helped snare so many of them, agreed to go undercover for the government after being busted for using a sham charity to funnel bribes to coaches and others. He wasn't involved in this one. But my main point here remains the same. Why are so many parents and coaches being criminally prosecuted but no accountability for the colleges? Look, obviously, I think that those parents who are sending fake or Photoshop pictures of their kids on their school's water polo or track team, for example, knew exactly what they were doing. And that's not just a donation. But I also think that some of these parents are like many rich parents who paid to play. Joining me now is the renowned attorney Roy Black, who represented, I mean, Corey. Roy, good to see you again. It's been a long time. So thanks so much for coming on the show. Just summarize for us, for people who were not following your case that closely, what was the heart of your defense? Well, Dan, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you again. There are really two things that I focus on, because I went to school literally on what happened before. Number one, all the jurors, all the people who knew about the case had the idea that some disturb, a deserving student was denied a place at the school. So I got a statistician, went through all the records, proved that that was not the case, that they wanted 1,580 students at the school. They actually only admitted 1,547. There were 13 extra spots that they never filled. So that argument never worked in our case. And secondly, I said this was just over-prosecution by the federal government. There's no tax dollars involved, no public money, no public officials. This is, uh, deals with the tennis team at Georgetown. Why does the federal government in telling Georgetown how to run its tennis team? So I just think it was, you know, overbearing by the federal government injecting itself into a place it had no right to be. But did you also focus on this issue of how universities go about fundraising um, and sort of say that, you know, that, that, that there isn't that much of a difference here in terms of expectations? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. We issued subpoenas to Georgetown. We got them to disgorge 52,000 documents in which we showed the amount of fundraising they do. Whenever you're looking at one of these schools, they have a department, a whole department called development or advancement. That's a fancy term for raising money. 
and you become targeted. They investigate your background, how much money you donate, how much your house is worth, what's the worth of your business, and then they figure out how much money they can target you for. I mean, they are pros at raising money. Well, let me ask you, Roy, I mean, your client comes to you, right, going to hire Roy Black in this case. Did you convince your client to go to trial? on this? I mean, I know you can't discuss the specific conversations you had with him, but, but this is a big risk here, right? Looking at all these other parents who were convicted, all these other guilty pleas up to this point, big risk for you to take. Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Mr. Corey came to me and said, look, I don't want to plead guilty because I didn't bribe this guy. I want my story told. You know, whatever happens, happens, but I want you to go to court and tell my story. I didn't bribe him. I did give him money, but this was after his daughter was admitted, after his daughter had problems, and it was for his longtime friend that he played tennis with in college. This was not a bribe. He wanted that story told for better or worse, and the jury uh, agreed with us that this was simply not a bribe and not a crime. So different case, I mean, look, because I do think some of the people involved were definitely very, very guilty uh, here. So very different kind of fact pattern than in some of the other cases. Well, yeah, because there was no false facts. His daughter played tennis. His daughter was a decent student. He had uh, a lot of wealth in the family. He was targeted by the school and other schools for admission because they wanted to get a large number of donations in the future. And by the way, <clears throat> His family donated $50 million to Northeastern University. <laughs> it's not exactly as if they have not helped the higher well, education system in the United States. And another good investment he made, hiring Roy Black. Roy Black, thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.